I don't observe imagining as I do objects in space. I am the reality that is called imagining. So you don't see God because God is spirit. But you see the results of his activity in you. He is active in you as you imagine. You are completely free to imagine good, bad or indifferent. So you simply select what you want to imagine. Would you like to be, and you name it. Well, you say, but I don't have the background for it. I do not have any of the qualifications for it. It doesn't really matter. If imagining creates reality, you do not need the qualifications that the world thinks you need. All you need to do is simply to boldly assume that you are the man, the woman that you would like to be. And if it proves itself in performance, then you found him. Well, I have seen it numberless times in my 34 years of teaching. I started back in February of 1938. And here I am, this is February of 1972, and I'm yet to see it fail. If we, the operant power, applies it. It doesn't apply itself. We are the offering power. For in man is God. And God is man's own wonderful human imagination. So if I dare to assume that I am the one that I would like to be, well, that's God who's doing it. So how will I turn then to God tonight? Say, a half dozen people asked of me tonight. It takes no time. They voice their request. Well, when they're talking to me, they say, I would like so-and-so. Instantly, it comes within the frame of my golden rule. It's something I would like myself. If I were in their present state of consciousness, I would like that. It doesn't violate my rule. It doesn't injure someone. It doesn't take from anyone. Well, now, did I hear it? I heard it. Well, if I and my father are one, but then my father heard it. I do not know the means that will be employed to bring it to pass, but I can't deny that I heard it. If I heard it and I and my father are one, well, can I not now say to my inner being, thank you, Father? You heard it because I heard it. Well, if we know that he hears all that we ask of him, then we know we have already obtained the request made of him. So as the say to me, I would like so and so for that. I heard it. I do not know as a man called Neville how it's going to happen. I do not know. I'm not going to suggest what they do or what they should do. I only know that I heard it, and if I heard it, my father heard it, because he and I are one. He is my own wonderful human imagination. So I could actually say within myself as though we were two. Thank you. You heard it, because I heard it. And then allow the depth of my own being to devise the means necessary to bring it to pass. And then I am not responsible from that moment on. I do not call them up and say, did it happen? I do not get in touch with them and write them and say, tell me, what's, how, how are things coming? I, it's not my concern. I did what was asked of me. And all that was asked of me was to hear, use my imagination lovingly on their behalf. Well, I did it. In the twinkle of an eye, you don't have to go into some sweat to do it. I don't have to go to some church and do it. Go to some synagogue and do it. Or some so-called holy place. Wherever I stand should be holy. Because the Father is within me. And where can you go to a more holy place than where God is? If I know God is my own wonderful human imagination, then where can I go that could be more holy than wherever I am? No matter where it is. So the request is made, I heard it. And then having heard it, I give thanks to the being within me who has the means, the wisdom and the power to externalize it. Knowing that the entire outside world, that all objective reality is solely produced through imagining. What is now proven in the world was once only imagined. Try to deny that. Try to deny it. There isn't a thing in this world that you can say that's real, that was not first only imagined. So a man, a friend of ours, he's unemployed. All right, so he's unemployed, 
and he doesn't have the qualifications for a better job, and there is no job at the moment for what he has. So what? I will be working. I will hear him tell me that he has the most marvelous job, and he's gainfully employed. What the job is, I do not know, but I can say to myself, well, if I heard it, surely the depth of my own being heard it. And so I can say thank you. Having reworked him in my own, my own mind's eye into an entirely different being, the same friend, but not one unemployed, he is now gainfully employed. So feel it. If I can feel this state, I'm finding God. For God is spirit. And may I tell you, and by spirit I do not mean some intangible thing. It actually is the human form divine. When I speak of the human imagination, it is a form, it's a reality. It is the divine form. So the eternal body of man is the human imagination. And that is God himself. And there is no other God. 